Welcome to the wrap up, folks. This is your daily show where we talk pop culture and movie news, hosted by me, Mr. H Reviews. For timestamps for everything that we'll be touching on today, you can check that down below in the description box and in a pinned comment. So please just skip right ahead. You don't have to, you know, just listen to me waffle about stuff you don't want to listen to. You can check out those time codes down below. But today, what we'll be talking about is X Men. Dark Phoenix, the reshoots that have been taking place and exactly kind of why. We'll also be taking a look at the Suicide Squad. This is James Gunn's follow-up, which was rumoured to be a reboot, but isn't because, hey, Joel Kinnaman is returning as Rick Flagg. And then we'll be taking a look at Terminator Dark Fate uh, and some interesting snippets surrounding that and some bits and pieces which I think everyone would have uh, hoped that the internet would forget, but it's still very, very much there. And then also we had revealed some on-set photos of Scarlett Johansson for the Black Widow movie, which we'll take a look at, but just spoiler alert, there's nothing really too crazy going on there. So like I said, skip right ahead if you don't want to listen to me waffle. But hey, if you are new here, please do hit subscribe uh, for your daily show where we talk pop culture and movie news, The Wrap Up. And of course, if you like this video, please do give it a like and a share, as that really does help me and this show out an awful lot. So let's get right into it. X-Men Dark Phoenix. Uh, the ending was completely reshot. We knew this for some time. The ending was supposed to be uh, set in space. It was going to be this big space finale. And then we heard it got changed to a train. Yes, that's right, guys, ladies and gentlemen. They changed the ending of X-Men Dark Phoenix from space to a train. Because that's... Yeah, interesting, to say the least. Um, but there was... When this news came out as well, mind you, I was really, really, really surprised to hear this. Because, of course, you think to yourself, right, you've changed it from space to a train. What's the motivation there? You know, why would you do such a drastic change? And the motivation that has since been revealed uh, by James McAvoy in this interview just seems baffling to me. Uh, especially considering Fox's history with superhero movies. So... James McAvoy states, The finale had to change. There was a lot of overlap and parallels with another superhero movie that came out a while ago, and we had no idea that we were. And then Michael Fassbender uh, cuts in. They had spies on set, uh, basically just laughing, saying that they another movie stole their ideas. Uh, it says that we're basically trawling through the source material, it seems. Now, 20th Century Fox and X-Men... And their finales have always been the same. They have all been the same, basically. Big blue beam in the sky or something blasting off in the sky. Jaggedy metal flying everywhere. And then the, the team up happens. That's the ending of most X-Men movies. X-Men Apocalypse was that. Um, I'm fairly certain their, even X-Men First Class had Magneto at the end. Similar kind of thing. I'd have to you know, take a look off the top of my head. The previous X-Men saga was basically the same, uh, especially with Dark Phoenix on there. That was basically the same. So I'm really... <laughs> I am really surprised that this was their motivation to change the entire movie. Uh, the finale, anyway, from space, which would have been different for the X-Men, right? Because that's something they've never done before. Uh, they've never gone to space, and they were going to have a finale in space... But they removed it to a train. Insanity. All because apparently it was similar to another movie uh, that came out. Which I can only assume it will be Captain Marvel. Um, and what I'm thinking is that maybe the Scrolls are involved. We heard rumours that the Scrolls were going to be involved in uh, this, this, you know, this, this movie. But I'm not overly sure now how this is affected by the Disney Fox acquisition. Because um, I can't imagine Disney would have allowed them to. My thinking is, because this all happened around the Disney Fox acquisition, okay, so that's no surprise, that's no uh, rumour, it's confirmed. I think part of the deal was change the end of X-Men Dark Phoenix so there are no scrolls in the film because we've just introduced them in Disney, uh, in Marvel. I think they were going to have the scrolls uh, show up and I, and I think they've now since removed the scrolls from the film. I hazard a guess that's going to be the case. Um, I doubt we'll ever actually know what it was. But it really is surprising that that is the reason why. Um, 
really, really baffling. Really, really baffling. But as of all things and topics that I cover here on this show today, what do you think about this? Do you think it's going to be the scrolls? Because, of course, you've got to remember there is, you know, a very small, finite time uh, that the, the movies that they're referencing here would have come out within. And I think it's Captain Marvel. I genuinely think it's Captain Marvel. So let me know your thoughts down below. Now, we'll be moving on and taking a look at Joel Kinnaman's Instagram. Why? Why, I hear you ask, why are you looking at Joel Kinnaman's Instagram? Well, it's really just because of this part. At the range with my great friend and teacher, Kevin uh, Kevin L. Vance and Lily the Italian Stallion. Uh, easing into that squad prep, thanks Taron Tactical for letting us use the range. So it's basically just confirming that he is preparing for the Suicide Squad sequel, reboot, who knows what this is. Um, but the fact that there's so many returning characters now, we've had confirmed that Captain Boomerang is turning back up. That was already confirmed uh, by Jai Courtney. Now we're getting Rick Flagg turning back up. Again, confirmed by the man himself. I, it's definitely not a reboot, is it? Maybe a soft reboot, who knows? Um, but the likelihood is he will just be playing the same character, uh, Rick Flagg, which is fine. I mean, he didn't really have a lot to work with with the last script, did he? Um, and his dialogue was just atrocious. So I, I am interested in seeing this, mainly because James Gunn, um, just because I think he could do something interesting with this property. But hey, look, it you know remains to be seen. Now, what we're going to be touching on, and yes, I'm going to be pulling up a, uh, a Screen Rant article here. So look, you know, don't hate me too much. Um, but the reason why is this all comes to us from uh, Flicks in the City, which is now a removed interview uh, by Cinema Blend. So you can't track down the original interview, which is very, very irritating. But it's very surprising because this comes to us uh, on the back of obviously X-Men, X-Men, uh, Terminator Dark Fate uh, coming out. And then the, the kind of, you know, a lot of people are amped for it. A lot of people aren't. A lot of people are questioning it, etc., etc. But one thing which can't be denied is James Cameron and what he says on the lead up to these movies. Does anyone remember the interview for Terminator Genesis? Anyone remember how he sung the praises of that film? Because my God, did he sing the praises of that film. He really, really did. Now, what he says is, I said, look, I'd love to be involved in this, but I can't be involved in a Terminator movie without working with my good friend of 35 years, Arnold Schwarzenegger even if it's to officially pass the baton to a new generation of characters. So that's what we all agreed to do. Then the question became, what about Linda Hamilton? Does Linda want to come back? Now, James Cameron is a really... Everyone seems to forget what James Cameron um, says and does, mainly because his movies have have genuinely been pretty, pretty good. But can anyone remember what he said on the lead-up to Terminator Genesis? You will love this film. This is the best film ever. This is a true uh, sequel. This is so good. Blah, 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 blah. He confirmed that he was lying. <laughs> he confirmed that he was lying. So, I think it's fairly widely known that I don't have a lot of respect for the films that were that were made later. I was supportive at the time, in each case, for Arnold's sake, because he is a close friend. He has been a mate of mine since 33 years ago, so I was always supportive and never too negative, but they didn't work for me in various, uh, for various reasons. This man will lie consistently for Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, and I, I'm, not, I'm not bringing this up as anything to... Um, to kind of crap on the guy or anything like that. It's not really what I want to do here. I just find it really interesting how, as an industry, the movie industry, we don't allow, you know, as audience members and rabid fans of these products, we don't allow certain things to fly by. But blatant lying to the fan base, we let slide. Why? Why? It's so crazy to me. So, I, at this point, I always take um, what James Cameron says with a pinch of salt because he's been 
you know, well regarded and, and well documented now in interviews how he just says these things to support his friend. I've got to commend him on the supporting his friend, uh, you know, topic and business because at the end of the day, got to have friends, I guess. Um, but it's not like Arnold Schwarzenegger's hard up for cash, is it? So it's not like he really needs the money and he needs the movies to do well. But hey, look, it's interesting nonetheless. I just find it really, really surprising. Does this bode well for the film? You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger coming back? It's surprising as well because a lot of people have said that, you know, in the trailer, Arnold Schwarzenegger is just kind of chewing scenery. He's just, he's just there, like he pops up briefly. Um, and then we do see him battling a Terminator underwater. So that doesn't really seem to be a reason for him being in the film, especially with the new uh, passing of the baton, which is kind of what James Cameron has said here. You know, uh, he needs to be in the film, even if it's to officially pass the baton to a new generation of characters. So it begs the question, like, what, what's the point of Arnold Schwarzenegger even being in there? At this point, it seems James Cameron has said, you want me involved in the film? You want me to put my name on it? We've got to do some fan service. And I know I'm going to get hate for that, but that seemed, you know, I'm reading between the lines here that that's basically what it is. I need Arnold Schwarzenegger in the film, even if it's only to pass the baton to new people, which makes it seem like, well, it's it's gratuitous, it's pointless. They're just chucking characters in for the sake of it, which, you know, in my eyes is, is it kind of defeats the object of doing these things. So I'd love to hear your thoughts, though. You know, let me know down below in the comment section. Are you one of these people that saw the trailer and just said, wow, I want to see this film? Or were you one of those people that saw the trailer and said, wow, what a pile of garbage. Uh, I'm never watching this movie. Let me know down below in the comment section. And on all of today's topics, let me know your thoughts down below. Joel Kinnaman returning as Rick Flagg. Did you like him in Suicide Squad? Did you dislike him? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, and now moving on, what we're touching on is just very, very briefly, Scarlett Johansson spotted on set. There's there's nothing crazy here, but we'll take a look at those photos. So this is over on Twitter. This is a um, a Black Widow fan Twitter. But hey, look, they have spotted uh, Scarlett Johansson uh, on set. You can kind of tell because, of course, the hair. This is set between Civil War um, and the rest of the movies, I believe. I think it's set after Civil War, basically, and before Infinity War. So you've got the hair... Um, it's, yeah, I mean, there's not an awful lot going on here. There's a quick set photo as she runs through. I don't believe they're really, they could be filming. Um, yes, they are filming because we can see the rig there. Um, because initially I saw these and I thought, oh, she's literally just doing some shopping. Um, but we see the rig here. So they are definitely filming something. Not overly sure kind of what it is, uh, you know, obviously this is just a scene. Maybe she's on the run. We know that obviously after Civil War, you know, characters do go on the run. Um, but there's nothing major to see here. I just thought I'd bring you this anyway. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comment section. Is this a movie you're looking forward to now that we know the ultimate end of Black Widow in Avengers Endgame? Does this seem kind of moot at this point in time? I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. And like I said, on any of the topics that I've covered here today. Now guys, what I like to do at the end of the show is cover some viewer questions. There's, as we're getting the show going, because this is a brand new show, we're kind of slowly uh, getting the viewer questions come in. I was going to be doing the hashtag, the wrap up, um, but now I encourage you just to email me the questions using the subject line, the wrap up uh, to MrHReviews at gmail.com. However, Monkey Zor uh, used the hashtag, the wrap up uh, to ask a question uh, after the fiasco of Hellboy 2019, would you watch a movie dubbed David Harbour Chocolate Boy? Uh, <laughs> this is obviously a riff on some of the news that came out where David Harbour was kind of lamenting the movie and using a bizarre analogy of chocolate and flavours and taste and things like that to justify the movie not doing very, very well, um, whilst also kind of poo-pooing Marvel and things like that. I would not watch a movie... Uh, dubbed Chocolate Boy with David Harbour in the lead role. Um, it almost sounds, yeah, a little bit untoward, so definitely not no. Um, but guys, if you want your viewer questions answered, please do email them to me over at misstagereviews at gmail.com using the subject line, The Wrap Up, and hopefully we can get a few more going and then I'll be able to answer some questions at the end. Hope you enjoyed today's 
uh, you know, wrap up of pop culture and movie news. As always, if there is any more that breaks uh, from now until tomorrow, I will bring you, uh, you know, news flash pieces. Guys, if you are new here, please do hit subscribe to stay up to date on this the Daily Show, and then also everything else that I cover. If you haven't already, please do go check out my Godzilla King of the Monsters movie review. Uh, I released that yesterday. It's done very, very well, and I'm very happy with the interaction from people, but I would love to hear, you know, as you watch the movie, I'd love to hear kind of viewer reviews, so please do go and watch that and drop down your own thoughts. Guys, thanks so much for watching. As always, I've been Mr. H. Take care.